Well, good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's Super Bowl Sunday. Who's all in favor of the New York Giants? No, they're not even in the playoffs. <laughs> the <other> game. <laughs> Who likes the Kansas City Chiefs? The Patagons are all fired up. <laughs> okay, what about the <laughs> Philadelphia Eagles? <laughs> what a commercial. Who doesn't care and only watch the commercials? <laughs> Amen. Um, well, uh, this morning I have, a, I believe, a word from God for you about Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> no. But just remember, this week is Valentine's week, right? And it's on what day? Okay, all the women said Tuesday. <laughs> Don't forget now. Uh, okay. If you're here um, for the first time or then coming to the church, this month we are starting on what we call a soap series. And it's really helping you develop a devotional life in the Word of God. And we use the word SOAP in the acronym. And S is for, O is for, A is for, and P, that spells, I sound like a cheerleader thing. <laughs> Give me an S, no. <laughs> Anyway, we are in a soap, and we are going to uh, have you uh, participate this morning at the beginning. Um, before we do that, I've asked David. Where's David? David, can you come up? Let's give David a hand. He's going to share a soap that God spoke to him as he did it. So, as you know, David uh, is uh, the youngest of the Sato family, the kids. And you haven't seen him around. He's been with us in Wailuku for all the years, leading worship, teaching. I think he even preached at times. And so just welcome him as he shares the soap. Hi, good morning. How is everybody doing? Good. Um, so Pastor Lance calls me yesterday. He goes, hey, I need you to share something for me. I'm like, oh, okay, sure, I can do that. He goes, pick a soap that really impacted your life and share it. And I'm like, I got journals everywhere. How am I going to pick just one? Um, so everybody remembers 2020, right? That was like COVID outbreak that whole thing, lockdown, and that was life-changing for like a lot of people, but what really started to impact me was 2021, and there was a lot of different things going on with work, with um, uh, employee issues, sales issues, a whole bunch of stuff. Like 2021 was where it all just fell apart, and so this was a, 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 a soap that came through back in April for me in 2021. Uh, the scripture was 1 Corinthians 7, 13 to 14, and it says, And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer, and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife, and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. And so I looked at that, and I was like, how does this, why is this sticking out to me? I'm... I've been raised in a Christian home. I'm a believer. My wife is a believer. My children are, um, are saved. Why is this standing out to me so hard? And as I looked over it, it struck me that this isn't just for my family and my household. This is for everything outside of my house. This is for me and my position as a manager. This is for me as a position as a leader. This is for me, um, and because I have a relationship with God, everything that I touch, everything that I impact, everything that I influence is going to be blessed. And so I started to pray through my workplace as I started to go into there. And um, different things started happening, things started changing. Um, but the observation was there is a blessing and a covering over our household where, where a follower of Christ is because of them. Their spouse and children are under that blessing and protection. Uh, the application was this doesn't just apply at home and family, but also the workplace, places that you visit, things that you commit to. Um, and so as that stuck out to me, I started to pray, and my prayer was, may my house be blessed because of my relationship with you, but not just, because of, not just my home, but my place of work, influence, and connections. 
bless everything that I bless because you blessed me. Amen. Wow. That was a really great soap. Okay, right now we're going to give you an opportunity in your bulletins, or if you don't have a, a soap uh, insert, we're going to give you five minutes um, to do a soap and to get, I guess, used to doing one. And so the scripture that we are going to use is found in Matthew chapter 4. So what you do is you do everything, write the scripture down, uh, write what you think the scripture is saying, application is how it applies to your life, what God is speaking to you. And lastly, write a prayer on, the, on that uh, scripture. So I'm going to give you five minutes as we share. Can we have some music? And online.
Okay, amen. How was it? Wonderful, okay. Rama, can you share yours? <laughs> Since you're sitting here <laughs> in front of her. <laughs> Since you're up front. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so the scripture is, well, I have a uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Observation. To truly believe this, <clears throat> I need to re uh, apply it. I must set aside my tongue. You know that tongue uh, that likes to wag. I must listen to the Father's guidance. Application. When my son, Everett, likes uh, back talks to me, or states he is doing what he wants, I need to remember God has a plan and I don't need to do verbal battle, the battle of anger. Prayer. My sweet Jesus, please help me be remember your presence. When I <clears throat> get triggered by others, I will wait for your good words. I hope so. That was good. That was great. So we want to encourage you to get in God's word. Also, uh, um, Brian Harris turned me on to the, uh, on the app in your phone. Uh, there's an app called Soap App. And you can download that and use that as your devotional too. Also, the church has soap journals. So if you want one as you're at the end of service, as you're going through the lobby, they'll be available for you. And it has everything in here. Um, the journal, same thing, okay? Amen. Okay, let's pray as we get into God's word this morning. So, amen. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your great love for our life. And we're here, Lord, to honor you and to worship you as we come before you. We open up our hearts, Lord, that you would give us a word into our life at this moment. So we thank you for each one now, in Jesus' name, amen. So I want to open with a scripture found in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 34. It says, blessed is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates. He's talking about wisdom. Be waiting beside my doors for whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. Wisdom is having God's word in our life because it's far more precious than material things. The word of God is a blessing. It brings life favor. Wisdom is really the application of knowledge. Wisdom encourages us to live a life pleasing to God and others on a daily basis. Wisdom really comes from our hearts, from God. Jesus was filled with wisdom, and he grew in wisdom. So I, I thought I'd share three points as I was reading through uh, the book of Proverbs. He said, I said, wisdom is speaking God's word from our mouth. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Throughout the book of Proverbs, Solomon compares two opposite ends of the spectrum in character, in words, and in deeds. And in this verse, he compares the righteous and the wicked. Each one speaks a different language. You know, every day we get up, we make choices. And this scripture reminded me that we have the power of life and destruction in our mouth to people. We have a choice every day to speak and how to speak. You know, recently, uh, my friend from the golf course, he was on vacation as his assistant too, and he asked me to fill in two Fridays. So the first Friday I went in, and I did it a while back too, to help. And so um, it wasn't a good day. I got into a superintendent mode, you know, and, and I told one of the workers uh, in addressing an issue, and it wasn't really in the best way. And so the, so the end of the day, I didn't feel good. And this scripture reminded me about how I speak to people. So the next week came about, and I decided I made a choice. I said, I'm going to be a blessing, 
in word, deed, when I go and help. So in the morning, I came in, I brought donuts. Everybody loves donuts. <laughs> Might not be good for your health, but it's good. <laughs> I brought donuts. And then I greeted everybody, and I made it a point to thank everybody at the end of the day. So I went around, and I thanked everybody. I helped whatever I could during the day. And so happened at the end of the day, as the workers were coming in, they would have to fill this report out. And this one of the employees was putting it in the tray, and then he started talking to me. So happened I was there, and he started talking to me. And he started to share about, he said, oh, I'm not going to be here, you know, Monday next week. And I was thinking, yeah, I'm not going to be here too. But anyway, <laughs> then he said, oh, I have to go to the doctor with my wife because my wife has uh, something in her throat, and they, may ha they don't know what it is. They may have to do something, you know, severe surgery and all that. And as he was talking to me, you know, all of a sudden my mind said, you should pray for him. And I was like, um, I don't know, for some reason, I didn't do it. And at the end, I said, I'll pray for you. But I felt like God wanted me to pray verbally with him. I don't know what the reason why I didn't. Either it was fear or I wanted to go home. <laughs> but, but it was just an opportunity there that God presented to me to be a blessing, to honor God and glorify him. And I thought, if we make a choice in our life to speak well, to bless, do things, God will give us opportunities to share his love to them. So... I had a big F for the day. <laughs> so the application to this is choose to speak words of life on a daily basis. You have the choice to do it. And you have the power in you to do it. And God wants you to be a blessing to people. Can I hear an amen? Okay. <laughs> Just remember... How I missed it, okay, when it, God speaks to you. <laughs> the second thing is that wisdom is having character. I put as part of our lives, but actually it shouldn't be part. It should be in our lives. Wisdom is saying that we need to have God's character in our life. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with the humble is wisdom. Again, in Scripture, in Proverbs, two hearts. One pride, one humility. Both have a different path. Humility, wisdom, which is God's favor. Pride brings disgrace. You know, I think all of us has some pride in us, whether we think we don't. I remember when I told this story when my sister, my friend, when I first became a Christian, my friend told me about how he yelled at his sister, got into a fight, and I just said, oh... Uh, I don't have a temper. The next thing you know, I'm yelling and screaming at my younger sister. <laughs> and then in tennis, we had this, you know, Pastor shared about it. We had like a friendly tournament among us. And then they had rated everybody, the, who they thought was the best, you know, and all that. And so they matched the women and the men, the best women and the men. And, uh, anyway, we, we took second. And after that, I told myself, okay. I'm pretty much on the bottom of the ranking because I'm just learning. But you know what? I'm going to beat these guys. <laughs> so the next time came, we played. Uh, the, next, uh, the week next, yeah, the next week we played. I lost every single match. <laughs> I thought maybe it was my partner, not was me. <laughs> and then I injured my knee. And I was like, oh, I wonder if God is trying to humble me with my attitude. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> God wants us to have humility, and he wants to work it in us. And if you think you have pride, then get married. <laughs> Your wife will tell you. <laughs> you know, it's so, it's so hard um, when you think you're right, and you have to apologize. When you think you're right, but you still have to apologize, and you have to tell your wife, I'm sorry. <laughs> Humility leads us to God's blessing. 
But pride wants to tag along. You know, this past week in our staff meeting, uh, Pastor Jonathan shared about King Solomon and his life. And King Solomon, as you know, wrote uh, Proverbs. And he shared about his life, and I thought it was really cool and interesting. But you find out this, that when you think about it, King Solomon was a very humble king at the beginning. Think about it. He was chosen. His mom had committed adultery with David, his father-to-be. He was not the firstborn. He was very young when he was uh, installed as king. He bypassed all of David's brothers, sons, all of them. And he went to the throne. I believe he had a humble heart. And in Kings 3, God visits Solomon in a dream and speaks to him and asks him, ask what I shall give you. Wow. What if God came to you and asked you that? Ask what I shall give you. I think Solomon in his heart, he had humility. And his re reply was, I want to receive understanding and understanding mind to govern the people, to discern what is good and evil. And because of that, God granted the prayer and even more. I believe his, his prayer reflected the humility in his heart. But as time went on, with accomplishments of wealth, he had women, and he had glory. People wanted to meet him. He had fame. And I believe it turned his heart. And it turned his heart where the worship of God got farther and farther. He started with a humble heart. Then he became prideful. And we look at it, he had a regretful heart at the end. How do we walk in humility? Well, I got three H's. <laughs> honor God and his word. Get into the word. Get to know God, honor him. Two, have a grateful heart. And three, have a heart to serve others. You know, of all the three, honor God and his word, have a grateful heart, have a heart to serve. Which of the three you think God is working on you? For me, it's all three. <laughs> the application is choose to serve instead of being served. You know, for, we know that it's uh, Super Bowl Sunday, right? And for some reason, I decided to do a uh, research on the teams and the quarterbacks. And lo and behold, I found Patrick Mahone, who is the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, how many loves him and the team? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a couple. Okay. <laughs> Can we have a uh, slide of him and the mom? Okay, this is what his mom says. You know he's a believer? The mom said his faith has kept his, her son remaining humble in the midst of fame and success. I want him to stay humble. That means a lot to me. I always encourage him to pray and thank God for the blessings that he has and his abilities. Pastor Mahone says this. Before every game, I walk the field and I do a prayer at the Gopals. I just thank God for those opportunities. And I thank God for letting me be on the stage where I can glorify him. The biggest thing that I pray for this, that whatsoever happens, win or lose, success or failure, that I'm glorifying him. Talk about a humble person. He came into the league in 2017. He was the backup quarterback. In 2018, he was lifted into the uh, starting quarterback. He led them to the uh, AFC championship game, which they lost. 2018, he went and take them to the Super Bowl, and they won. 2021, they went to the champion AFC championship, they lost. And this year, they're in the Super Bowl. One thing about... I read an article that says Patrick Mahomes' work off the field is as impressive as his performance on it. 
he learns to serve and give for what God has given him. He has built a foundation, a mission to improve the lives of children in the community and even beyond Kansas City. Patrick Mahone has a humble heart. And because of a humble heart, God has elevated his life, and that has kept him up there. I don't know if they're going to win, but anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, the last point I just want to share with this is wisdom is applying God's word to our faith. Scripture says, my son, keep my words and treasure up my commandments with you. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my teachings as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And Matthew 4.4, 4, which we just did in the soap. And he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth. So the application is this. Choose to have God's word in your life. And even memorize it. You know, our sole challenge is to make God's word be in your life, where you live it, where, you, where your faith is connected to it. And with that, it will bring hope, help, joy, blessing, peace, favor, strength, direction, and righteousness. With that, I, I did research the other quarterback, and lo and behold, <laughs> and lo and behold, he's a believer too. I was shocked. <laughs> May the best believer win. <laughs> so I did, I bio on I, I researched him because it was so intriguing. I thought, wow, this is, I didn't know this all these years. I found out in 2016, which I followed college football, some, some of it, he was a freshman in Alabama. And he was actually the second string. He got the first string in the season when the first string got hurt. And he took them to an undefeated season. They went to the national championship, but they lost. In 2017, as a sophomore, he was the starting quarterback. He led the team into the national championship game against Georgia. And at halftime, they were losing 13 to 0. And what did the coach do? He pulled him out and put Tua inside who's from Hawaii, and who's a believer too. He put him in, and Tua made one of the best, greatest comebacks ever in college football. They went into overtime, and they won 26-23. How would you feel if you were there as Jalen, being benched and seeing that and the, your replacement takes him too? The next year, the coach decided that Tua was going to be the starting quarterback, and he was going to be backup. Through the season, Tua went, and Jalen had some opportunity in there. The team went to the national championship again with Tua, and they lost. Going through all of that as a freshman leading the team to a national championship, but they lost. So in 2019, he decided to transfer to Oklahoma, knowing that he would be the backup quarterback at Alabama again his last year. He went to Oklahoma. He led them into the playoffs, but they did lose in the playoffs. Then he was drafted that year by Philadelphia in the second round. He was listed as the third-string quarterback. The team went 4-11-1. Right, Khalil? <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> I think it was painful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he said, the fans, the people didn't want him there to begin with. And he, I mean, he was still there. But today, he's in the Super Bowl. And as I looked at his bio and I read his bio a lot, he said this, I know that it was a big surprise to many. A big surprise. But my favorite verse, you know, I went through a lot of stuff in college. And this verse stuck with me in John 13, 7. It says, you may not know now, but later you'll understand. 
that word that had, he had in his heart kept him through all the years, from the college years when he was benched as a, to put as a second quarterback. But he hanged on to God's word. You may not know. Can we have the worship team come up? And we're going to close. That scripture kept him going. And how important it is to have God's word in us when times are hard and difficult and you have questions, Mark. And I remember when I was going through my heart uh, issue and they wanted to open me up because they went in and they said, oh, it's really bad. And they said, so they couldn't do it. Uh, he, they told me, oh, you got to get a quadruple bypass, whatever. And, and then and I, was, I got fear in my heart because, you know, you're dead. They're going to cut you up, open you up, your bones and all that. And I had a fear in my heart. And I had a fear in my heart because they're going to do it in Maui. And, they said, <laughs> and I said, I need a second opinion on this. <laughs> but that word, then I began to see God. And a word came to me. In uh, Psalms 24, and it says, the bones of the righteous will not be broken. And that gave me a peace in the direction to go. I'm not totally, you know, 100% healed. I can play tennis and all of that. But that word made, gave me a peace on what direction to go. And so how important it is for us to have the word of God in us. Amen. And let's stand. And if you're going through things, just remember that this scripture. You may not know now, but later you'll understand.